Hi, Assalamualaikum and how are you? Welcome to PMC 500, Statistical Reasoning in Education. It's me, Dr. Ija. I'm going to teach you with our lecture today. So basically, what we are going to learn today is regarding descriptive statistics, summarize the data and display the data. So we have done with the running descriptive analysis using SPSS, SPSS in part one. So today we're going to proceed with a running descriptive analysis using SPSS for part two. So the objective of our lecture today is for you to able to describe the distribution, calculating the mean, mode and median, standard deviation, variance, skewness, and also the distribution. So in this video, I'm, all, I'm going to explain to all of you regarding central tendency measurement. So what is actually central tendency measurement? It's referring to numerical value to represent the center point of data set, it indicates where most values in a distribution fall. It describes the whole data with one value. And there are three types of central tendency measurement, which are mode, median, and also mean. So I think all of you have heard about what is mode, what is median, and what is mean before this. So let us look at what is actually mean by mode. So mode is referring to score with the highest frequency. So I repeat, mode is referring to score with the highest frequency. Whereas median is referring to score at the middle when the data is arranged from smallest to largest. So when you want to find the measurement uh, using median, what you need to do is first is that you have to uh, sort the data from the smallest to the largest first. Okay, and after that, you will get the, the score at the middle of the data that you have arranged. And for mean, mean is referring to a total score divided by the number of score that you have. So let's say for this example, we have um, a score of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 score that you have collected from your sample and the score are 3, 7, 9, 4, 5, 4, 6, 9, 9. Okay, so how do we get mode? Mode is the score with the highest frequency. So if you can see here, 9 is the mode, yeah, where there are 3 uh, frequency, yeah, 3 frequency of student maybe who get score of 9. So please remember that we don't write mode as uh, 3. Yeah, but we write the num the score. Yeah, the score is 9. The number of frequency is 3. So we don't write the uh, highest frequency, but we write the score. As for the median, what you need to do is first you need to arrange the scores from smallest to largest. So after we arrange it, the position is 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 9, 9. And the score in the middle is known as median. Okay, so here the median is 6. Yeah? Whereas the mean is a total score divided by number of score. So let's total up 3 plus 7 plus 9 plus 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 9 plus 9. And the total number of score is 9. So when we divide the total score with number of score, the median here is 6.22. So if you want to get the central tendency measurement using SPSS, of course, you have to key in all the data into your SPSS. And next, what you need to do is you go to Analyze, you choose Descriptive Statistics, and then you choose Frequency. And after you choose Frequency, you will see this dialog box where you need to key in the score or the marks into variable box, okay? And next, you need to click to statistics. And after you click statistics, you will get this box. So you can click central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode as well. And after you have choose that, you can click continue. So what is the advantages and weaknesses of the central, central tendency measurement 
using mean, median and mode. So let's look at the first one, which is mean. The advantages of mean is that it used the most as it is stable, take into account all data and suitable for continuous data. But the weaknesses is that it will be influenced by the extreme value. Yeah, it will uh, influence by the extreme value. For example, here we have 22, 25, 21, 26, 67. You can see that 25, 20, 22, 25, 21, and 26 are almost the same value. But when it comes to 67, it is an extreme value. So the weaknesses of mean is that it also count the extreme value into the measurement. So here we get 32.2 by including the extreme values as well. So that would be the weaknesses. For the median, the advantages of median is that it's not affected by extreme values. Yeah, but the weaknesses is that it just take the value in the middle. Yeah, remember median is um it's, it's occur when or, or you can get median when you arrange from the smallest value to the largest value and you get the value or the score that located in the middle. So that's the weaknesses of median. For mode, the advantage is that it's the simplest measurement and suitable for discrete data. But the weaknesses is that some of the data did not have mode value. For example, 11, 14, 19, 16, 25 and 36. Yeah, so in uh, SPSS or in um, a statistical reasoning in education, we usually take the mean as the central tendency measurement because it contains a lot of advan advantages. Right, let's move on to measures of dispersion. So what is measures of dispersion? It is a measurement that shows how well the values in a data set differ from one another or from the central of the data set. So there are two examples of measures of dispersion, which are variance and standard of deviation. So when we say about measure, measuring using dispersion, yeah, measures of dispersion, um, it shows how well the values in data set differ from one another from the central of the data set. So central of the data set is referring to the central tendency measurement, which are mean, median, or mode. So um, variance and CCMPY. CCMPY is standard deviation. Variance is a statistic that measures the extent to which scores in the data differs by the mean. So large values of variance indicate that the data are far from the mean. So this means that the data is more scattered. Yeah? So on the other hand, a small value of variance indicate that the data is close to the mean, which means that the data is more cumulative. So variance is a one measurement where we can see how far yeah, uh, the data or, or uh, the data yeah, indicate that the data are far from the mean by having a large variance. And if the data is close to the mean, it means that it have a small value of variance. Yeah. So in to make it simpler, you can understand variance by understanding that if you have the value of mean, if the standard deviation value is large, it means that um, the data, yeah, the data are far from the mean. If the variance is low, it means that the data is close to the mean. If it is far, it means that data is scattered. Yeah, the data is scattered. But if close to the mean, it shows that the data is more cumulative. And how do we get the CCMPRY or the standard deviation? Okay, to get standard deviation, you need to use this formula, which is, uh, this is a set of a var variance. Yeah. So this is an example of how we calculate the variance if you had um, uh, and also the standard deviation. But uh, this, this is just to show you how we calculate it. But I'm, going, I'm not going to explain to you in this video. Right, what would be the advantages of variance and standard deviation? So the advantages would be they are more accurate as the calculation involves all values in the data set. It measures the dispersion of each value from the mean value in the data set. The calculation did not involve the square of deviation and the unit for standard deviation and the unit for data 
is the same. So if you want to get the variance, the step is the same uh, like we try to find the central tendency. You just you need to key in the data into your SPSS. You go to analyze, choose descriptive statistics, choose frequency, and don't forget to bring all your variables into the variable box and then click statistics. And after you click statistics, you can go to dispersion because standard deviation and variance is under dispersion. So you can click on standard deviation and variance and then you can click conti, continue. Right, now let's look at the skewness of the dispersion. Yeah, so you know this dispersion can be divided into two which are the, uh, the standard deviation as well as the variance. So let's look at the skewness. So what is skewness dispersion? It gives the shape of distribution. Yeah, it gives the shape of distribution for the mean, median and mode. If your data or if your graph is skewed to the left, it means that it shows negative skewness and tail on the left side. Tail here meaning the tail of the um, bell shape. Yeah, this is a bell shape curve. You can see that this is a normal bell shape curve. But if it's skewed to the left, the tail is more on the left side. So we say that it's skewed to the left. So this is a normal distribution where the mean, median and mode is at the center. That's why we call it a central tendency measurement. And if it's skewed to the right, yeah, you can see that the tail, yeah, the tail is located on the right side. So this is skewed to the right. We are not referring to the, the shape of the pelt, but we are referring to the tail of the shape. Yeah. So skewed to the left, tail on the left side, skewed to the right tail on the right side. If it's normal distributed, all the mean, median and mode are located in the mean, in the middle. So this is example of appropriateness of measurement of measures of central tendency and dispersion for different levels of measurement. So we have a nominal, ordinal and interval data. You can use mode for the three of the um, data type of measurement. Okay, median, you cannot use uh, for nominal. Me, you cannot use for nominal and ordinal, but you can use for interval and ratio. And for variance and standard deviation, is the same as mean, you can use for interval and ratio only. Yeah. So that's all for our lecture today. Hope that you can understand how you can get the central tendency measurement as well as the dispersion using uh, the standard deviation as well as variance. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.